So hello, my name is Rugare Goma and I'm a high performance coach. Welcome to your business summit where we have experts ready to help you navigate your life and business during these unprecedented times. And today it's my great pleasure to introduce you to uh, James Shadrach, the founder of VideoEye. Hi, James. Hey, Rigari. It's great to be here with you. Thank you so much for being here on the Business Summit. Now, James is the founder of VideoEye and he helps business people uh, to effectively communicate their business digitally and online. And how you do that is via videography, content creation, um, and getting people connected to their why. And not only do you do that for others, you do that for me. You're one of my, you're part of my team to help me effectively communicate my business digitally. So it's a great pleasure to have this opportunity to interview you today. It's great to be here. It's great to be working with you. Awesome. So first of all, what is it that you love about video? Why? Yeah, sure. I, I love that it is creative and I get to talk about purpose all day and I, I get to help business owners and, and people share their purpose through video content. It's extremely fulfilling what I do. That's awesome. Now, today we're here to focus really on helping us as business owners effectively communicate digitally. So inside of that, what do you see that we don't do as business owners that has us fail to communicate um, really well digitally? Yeah, great, great question, Rigari. I think the, the big change that has happened is we're now all having to communicate digitally with cameras um, and get used to technology and not being face-to-face. -face. And there are a lot of things that come along that uh, we're struggling with as business owners and, and navigating these different styles of communication. And so what I've got is actually a couple of points on top do's and don'ts, so to speak, of um, just how to get your calls right, how to speak on a video call, um, and how to just feel more comfortable and how to be really effective in your communication when, you, when you're going digital. Fantastic. I look forward to hearing what these top you know, do's and don'ts are. So what are your top do's? What should we be doing as business owners to communicate well, effectively? <laughs> that's a good question. I'm actually going to start off with some of the things you want to avoid and the things you don't want to do. Um, <laughs> Great. Because so this, this is so common. And the thing is, Rigari, there's such simple things that you can pay attention to. And just yes. these small changes make such a difference in the way you communicate and, and your presence. So number one, and this is really to do with um, video calls, so Zoom calls, Google Hangouts, any type of call. Um, the number one thing you really want to be focusing on is muting your audio when you're not speaking. So oftentimes I see people who accidentally leave their microphone on and they don't realize that the whole time their microphone is on, their microphone is picking up noise, it's interfering, and it can be potentially distracting the speaker or the other person as they go through their speech. Fantastic. I like that. You know, I've been doing lots of group sessions at the moment. And one of the things that I've been learning to remember to do is everybody, please mute yourself because it can be very distracting, the background noise. And then you focus on just what is happening in the background. Then I get resentful. Everybody else gets resentful. Then the whole thing is so disconnected and nobody even remembers why they're there because they're so yeah. fed up with all this background yeah. noise. Correct. And what, what it is, is if you're all face to face in a group, it is the equivalent of the speaker talking and you're just talking right over it. That it's the same thing, but just in a digital video audio format. That's a perfect way of saying it. It's the same thing as talking over, uh, talking yeah. over top of another person. And the worst thing is the person making the noise probably doesn't realize if you're yes. working from home and you have um, your construction workers outside or you have little kids who are running around um, or just someone talking in the next room, all that stuff can be picked up on your microphone and gets blasted to everybody who's on the call. Great. So it's simple, simple fix. It's just press mute when you're not talking. Well, do you know what? Do you know what's actually happened in this recording itself? I have my window open, so I need to actually go and close my window so that there isn't any distracting noise. So it's so good that we started with that. Yeah, so I'm going great. to do that Perfect. right now. Perfect example. <laughs> so James, guess what? I'm now back after closing that window. <laughs> nice. That's, that's fantastic. 
And I, I, yeah, it's, it's a small thing that makes a big difference. So the next uh, thing that you want to avoid is a bad camera angle. And so uh, right now I'm using my high quality DSLR camera to film and, and, and be on this call. But right now I'm actually going to switch to my laptop camera. And this is what most of us are going to be using. So you'll definitely see a change in quality. It is so different. Your grayish, palish grayish. Yeah. So the, the, one of the main reasons of the difference is the quality of the camera on your laptop. It's not meant to, you know, make beautiful, high quality video. It's just meant to do its job. But something that is, a, is an issue that you can fix is the angle. So most of us start off our calls like this where we get this kind of up the nose shot looking down at our camera uh, and it creates a couple of problems. First of all, this is just a very unflattering angle. You're looking right up my nose. Um, and I also <laughs> seem really big and imposing as I'm looking down on you because I feel so threatened right now, James, you're going to beat me up. Yeah. And it's, it's actually something you would do in film. You would position the camera in different angles to show one character is more dominating than another. So in this situation, I don't want to be the big dominating overpowering person, but most people sit down to a call and their camera's angle like this. The simple fix is changing the angle of your laptop uh, or just elevating your, um, your laptop. So lifting it up a little bit, tilting the uh, laptop screen backwards or forwards just to find the right angle. And really what you want is to have um, the camera meeting you at about eye level. So your wow. eyes are in the center of the frame because this is normally where you meet people when you're speaking to them. You're not over and looking down on them. You're not, you know, really low and looking up. You're looking right at them. That just changed the whole experience being with you. Um, just the way you just showed us the distinction between um, looking up, down somebody and just sitting back and relax. And I know that, you know, you trained me how to do this because, you know, as your high performance coach, I was really talking to you like this and it was kind of, it's kind of aggressive and there isn't that space for you to, you know, to yes. really think. So I know that yeah. just by right now I've got books up lifting my laptop. I'm looking at the camera and that makes a difference. And that's not how and I used to operate. And part of it as well is the way that you've set up your composition tells me that you know what you're doing. Because right now your composition is neat, it's tidy, you're in the center of the frame, your audio is sounding great. I know, great, this is a professional person who is completely in control. That's the message it sends. That's so great. And so can you tell me more what a composition actually means? Sure, yeah. So now we're getting into the composition. It's actually another, another one on my list here. So composition is really just everything in the frame. So everything on the screen is what we would call our composition. So it mainly for our, for our reasons, we're talking about our background, what's going on behind us. Now, oftentimes, particularly when we're working at home, um, we don't have a nice composition. We have a messy... Uh, unprofessional background because we're working at home, we're working out of our spare rooms, and this sends across uh, a message that you're just not organised. And it probably isn't the case; you just didn't realise it was getting picked up in your in your composition. So the basics of this are to have a simple and minimal background, uh, and that's just a safe bet to come across as professional um, and you know well well put together. So yours is actually a perfect example of someone who's done a good job at composition well, so, thank you. It's, it's okay so you have an adequate light source you have positioned yourself right in the center of the camera you're meeting me at eye level and you've also thought about and this is the really the key you've thought about your background and i can tell that it's not just haphazardly put there you've purposely put a book there you've purposely um, put a little plant and you've purposely put some extra books there there's nothing that looks out of place there's nothing that looks like oh that was a mistake there's some rubbish there or there's some mess there so that the real key is making it look intentional and that can just be by tidying things up moving things out of the frame i know because i helped you do this that you, you your did. background didn't always look like that it was horrible before I worked with you, I was like, like dark, 
Um, there wasn't enough lighting. So right now I actually have two light sources on me um, as well. And, and I've got and my laptop raised and the background was definitely not that. And we can, you touched on light, but before we go into that, yes. what did you change in your background? So I removed everything that was on the top shelf and then I positioned those books. Those books were typically in front of me, actually. And I also brought the plant that I have, because I have, actually have a, 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 a desk, for, a wall to wall desk. So yeah. I, put, I brought the books from my wall to wall desk to the back and my plant from the front to the back as well. And then I intentionally thought about the book I wanted in the background as well. Perfect. And I've been doing that for every single business summit. Perfect. That looks fantastic. And I love the way you've said you were intentional about it because the way you don't want to do this is you've unintentionally caught something in the background that you don't want there. That's not the image that you want, but yours is very intentional, clean, minimal. It's great. Great. And I think this is important because you trained me that when I'm working digitally, particularly as a high performance coach, I need to create a safe space for my clients to be vulnerable, to be present with me. And if I have a background or my composition, as you call it, is distracting, there is no way they'll get the full benefit of my, my work. So why would they actually want to work with me when they don't have an, ex an extraordinary experience just by my background? Yeah, so it. that was something you trained me in. So thank James. It's all good. You're doing a great job. Great. What other things would you like to share with us as your top tips? So the next one is to be present. So this is a this is a big one, and it's subtle, but it makes a big difference. Now that we're communicating digitally and doing video calls, it's very easy for me to hop onto my laptop and do something else while I'm talking to you. This is not what you want to do because you really can't multitask. And even though it's so easy to do other things like email, Slack, messages, you're not present with the person and you're not going to connect with them the way you want to. And particularly because we are in a digital format and we can't connect the same way we would face to face, it's more important than ever that you're completely present with the person you're speaking with. Great. And what does being present then look like? So after we've, you know, we've turned off all our digital platforms, is there a way we also need to be? The way we need to be. Well, I guess, I, I guess what you would notice is when someone isn't present, you might see, you might see them looking at you and they're really zoned in. And then all of a sudden they're kind of off to the side and you can kind of see their eyes looking back and forth as they're going through an email, you might hear them typing and then they're back to you, but they're really typing out the email. Yes. That's what someone who's not present looks like. I get it. And if we were doing it face to face, we'd just never do that. If we were having a coffee catch up, <laughs> yeah. we wouldn't be like, I'm looking at, you know, um, my emails while my friend is talking or the person I'm in a business meeting with is talking. So yeah. it's important for us to really maintain our presence digitally and not multitask whatsoever. Correct. And it's challenging, but it's well worth it. Great. The final point that I have um, is really just about understanding um, when your camera is on. So sometimes I've seen people who are on calls and they need to go attend to something. Maybe someone else is talking in the group chat and they need to get up and go do something. And once again, that sort of sends the message that you're just walking away as your friend or as a presenter is speaking. You're just getting up and walking away. You don't realize it because you, you don't feel like you're right there. That's what it looks like. So very simple fix is if you do need to go off, change something, do something, attend to something, just turn your camera off. And there's nothing wrong with doing that unless the person is talking straight to you. But if you're in a group scenario and you just don't want to show like you're not paying attention, just turn off your camera. No problem at all. That is such a good tip, you know, because if we were in a coffee shop or in a meeting, you just wouldn't stand up and walk off and do a stroll or, you know, um, do any other thing. So it is really about maintaining our presence and connection with people, even digitally. Like those, those still, the same principles of face-to-face -face still apply. And this is how we do it properly digitally. 
So yeah. those are my, I guess, my top do's and don'ts of, of going digital. Um, I think we're kind of leaning into some of the basics, such as lighting and, and audio. Did you want to run through that stuff? I'd be delighted to. You've really helped me with um, elevating my lighting and giving me peace of mind regarding my audio. And, you know, many of us as business owners right now, we may be really fearful of what do we do? You know, we I'm not a videographer. I don't have a home studio like you. I've never learned these principles elsewhere. So, you know, this can be really um, nerve wracking for us. So it'd be great to hear how you help us to uh, deal with our light and audio. So what, yeah, gotcha. how would you deal with our lighting? So... You're, you're another great example because your lighting is looking fantastic right now. Uh, because I had somebody who trained me. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing that you really want to keep in mind is that you always need a good source of light that is angled on your face. You want to be facing the light and you don't want your back facing the light. And so for most of us, the simplest way to do this is to find a big window or a window and sit right in front of the window and let all that natural light um, land on your face. This will make you look way better. It'll allow the camera to have an easier time giving you a, a, a good looking image. And it's just the best way to go about things. So natural light, sunlight, a window is number one. Fantastic. And then number two would be if you don't have that natural light coming in, then you would be looking at artificial lights. So you can purchase um, LED lights. They're portable lights that you can plug into a computer, to a USB outlet. They can add some extra light. So I'll quickly show you an example of what this looks like. So what I'm going to do is take away some of the light from my camera. So I'm making things a bit darker. And now I'm going to turn on an external light. So this is how a, um, an external or an LED light can also be used to light your subject. Great. And the key here as well is the light is facing right on me. The aim is to face the light and have all that light um, facing in and lighting your face up. Great. But how then do I know what, what is an LED light? How do I know where to get one and all of <laughs> exactly. that? This sounds now even complicated. Yep. I think for most of us, all you would really need is a window. Um, that's totally fine. If you are needing to use uh, LED lights, you could just use a lamp and have that aimed at your face. Um, but really, level one is just natural light. Level two yes. would be your own lamps that you have lying around your house. Level three would be purchasing some LED lights. So it's up to you to think about what's the quality looking like? Are you happy with it? Or do you need to invest and you're after a better quality? Fantastic. That's very good advice. So the next part, I'm just going to switch this light off. And probably this is a good example as well. You'll see now, um, as I turn off this light, the camera is going to struggle a little bit. So and is this, this your laptop camera? This is, this is still my DSLR camera. So this is my okay. high quality camera. And this is just an example of how if the camera doesn't have enough light, it really struggles to produce a good image. Even if you have a high quality camera or your laptop camera, they all struggle without a good source of light. Wow, it's so important to really have the right light on you. It just alters the whole experience because right now I feel as if we're going kind of gothic or dark, <laughs> yeah. you know? So I really get how light is so important in us, for us as business owners to have a great digital presence. 100%, so simplest thing is just find a window. So I have a bit more leeway with my camera here and I can control how much light gets into the camera. So now I'm going to allow some more light in and this will fix up the image. Wow. Night and day. Yeah. Night and day. And, and just to emphasize that, this is a DSLR camera thing that I just did, but we're just working with natural light and I'm limiting sure. light goes into the camera. 
So uh, I think audio is the, is the next thing to cover. Unless, did you have any other questions about light? I did. So instead of light, you know, one of the things you trained me is not mixing up my lamp yeah. light. So, and I think that would be a great conversation. Yes. So Can you tell me more about it? Yes. So there are different colors and types of light. And we look at them on a spectrum from warm yellow light uh, through to white um, light, which is similar to the light that we get from sunlight. And so these colors of light um, can be very problematic if you're using two different types of light on your face or to light your shot. If you're really advanced and you're on a production level um, situation, then you can play with different colors of lights. But for most of us here, if we use a yellowy light plus a white light, it's going to create all these harsh shadows, all these odd colors, and it's just not going to look great. So the simplest way to do this is just stick to one light. Here I'm using natural light. So it means if I had a yellow Tuscan orangey light in the room as well, I would turn it off. So I'm just using one source of light. Great. So the principle is one type of light for the entire thing. Correct. Do not mix your lights. Doesn't work. Correct. The other okay. thing that you trained me in as well is like right now it's kind of like late afternoon. So I'm actually not in front of my window. You're facing your window and I'm using my lights because the light from outside is going to change. So you've trained me, draw my curtains, turn on my lamps, let them face me. <laughs> yes. In essence. Is there anything else you'd like to say about that? Uh, no, I'll just, I'll just add. And I'll also show you an example of the different colors. Yes. I love examples. <laughs> but what you've done brilliantly is you've realized that the light outside is going to change. So you were using natural light and in the day it's white light predominantly. As it goes to sunset, it becomes this powerful yellow light, which is beautiful, but it changes everything. And then as it goes down, you're in complete darkness and you have no light. And you accounted for all of that by not using natural light and just using the lamps inside your house, which is fantastic. Do you know, it's so simplistic. I didn't know any of these things. And it just really took you, you know, 30 minutes having a conversation with me to alter my whole presence <laughs> yeah. online. Like even just doing this business summit you know, it's become very easy to do because you trained me on how to position my laptop. I'm using my laptop. It's amazing. Yeah. And two <laughs> lamps right. and altering my background. And in the past, that was not possible. So mm. it's the small things that have now elevated my presence that I would never have known. So I know this is going to be useful for everybody in our community who's listening to this. Fantastic. Um, so I'll see if I can show you an example of light. Great. So what I'm going to do is turn on my, uh, my external light. Very, very bright. So I'm going to limit the amount of light going into the camera. Okay. So what I'm going to do is change the color of the light. And this is, once again, this is, a, this is from an LED light. So it's a bigger investment to get this kind of light. So now I've changed it to completely yellow and orange light. And so you can see that this has a different effect on my skin tones and the way things look. And really the reason you would use these is if you want that warmer orange tone, but for most of us on calls, um, it just doesn't help that much. It just kind of gives us this yellow tinge and tone. So if I switch this over, you know, brighten this light up and you can see how everything changes as I change it to a, a white, a white type of light. So those and are just James, some examples. Yep. Does this also apply depending on your skin tone? Yeah. Because I'm a darker skin tone, so does it matter whether I'm using white light or yellow light? Or the rule is doesn't matter what your skin tone is, white light. It's a it's a good question. It depends how detailed you want to get into this. So, <laughs> So you could, if you wanted to look more tanned, you could use a slightly orangey tinted light to have a tinted type effect on your skin tone. If you're extremely pale and you blast a pure white light onto your skin, it will have a very luminous type of effect. And you have to be careful to put too much bright white light. So it's more so just pay attention to how things look as you're using different sources of light. 
but your safest bet always is just using natural light from the sun. Great. Good to know. So um, just so that everybody knows, I'm not using tinted light to look tanned. I am this color naturally. Yes. <laughs> but it's the principle there is about making sure that you present and look good, really. Yes. And then and being aware of that and how you, Correct. How you look and how you present. Correct. Wonderful. So now we'll run over some points over audio. Great. So there are some different levels when it comes to audio. Um, so number one would be the onboard audio of your device. So whether that is your phone that you're using or your laptop, there is an inbuilt microphone in these devices. Generally speaking, this is the lowest level of quality that you're going to get. They're pretty good. The technology is pretty advanced nowadays, but you're going to get a lot of issues with them. Particularly, it's a lower quality microphone and it also picks up a lot of background noise if you're using your onboard audio device. If it's all you have, try to find a quiet room that doesn't have a lot of echoey noises in it. So somewhere quiet that has um, some level of soundproofing. The next level up is to simply use a pair of earphones or headphones. Most of the time, these will have a better microphone which will give you a better signal and also the microphone. So this is mine here. It's generally uh, placed closer to your mouth. So the closer the microphone is to the audio source, the better signal you're going to get. So I've just got, I think these were 50 bucks. These are just Sony headphones. You could have, you know, $200, $300 high quality headphones and those are great as well. You could have um, Apple AirPods. Any of these devices are going to increase your level of audio. The next level is to use an external microphone or a USB microphone. This is a standalone mic that you would plug into your laptop and it will dramatically increase the quality of your audio. Um, now with these, some of them can seem, uh, well, it, it's, it's a big object that you're putting in the screen. I can show you with my phone, but just for an example, it did have a um, microphone. There's this big thing that you're speaking into and you, you look very much like you're um, a broadcaster and you're presenting. And some people feel like, oh, this is too much. I'm not ready to take the jump to having this big microphone. So a really simple fix is if you do get an external microphone, um, you could attach it to an arm and just hold it just out of frame so people still get the great audio quality, but they don't see it. Or if you're having it on your desk, you could you know, just angle it just out of frame so people can't see it, but you're still getting that great audio signal. That's kind of the basics of audio quality. Right. It's very, very simple. It, the, the principle is don't use your laptop audio. Use a headset audio that gives you the better quality for the people listening to you. And you don't have to go out and buy a $10,000 audio gear. It's as simple as $50 um, earphones that can make the difference. That's totally it. That's, that's so that's great. It. Thank you very much, James. Now, I'd be so delighted to see what's behind your scenes and how to make <laughs> all of this happen. Sure, okay. Uh, give me one sec and I'll show you what is behind the scenes. Great. So this is you know, the behind the scenes with James in his own home office. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, and so um, right here, I've got the DSLR camera that I'm using. This is the LED light that I've been using to light part of the video. And right here, I've just got this big window in front of me and that's really what's providing most of the light. Great. It's not even a big LED. I had this view that it was gonna be this gigantic piece of equipment but it's actually very small. Yeah. So this ah, is I understand. Uh, yeah. Great. So this is part of a setup that you could use. So I've got, uh, let's see, LED at the top here, and this is the DSLR camera. But really, this LED, It's just this. Wow. 
And so that's kind of the situation that you want to have it sort of lighting like this. Directly on your face. Correct. So the real important thing to get from this is the source of light is directly on my face. And if I'm having the LED, it's positioned on my face as well. Great. And how much does this cost, James? It, are these things prohibitive for us business owners or do they cost <laughs> tens of thousands to get? It's so simple. This is 150 bucks for an LED like this. Um, and it's really easy. Plug it in via USB um, and then you just hit the on switch. It's really that simple. That simple. That's awesome. And your camera? Camera, so something like this. This is a Sony A7 uh, III. It's about a $2,000, $2,500 camera. Um, this is really if you want to take things up to the next level. But if you have a DSLR camera, um, there are some things you can do to, to set that up and use that as a web camera as well. Fantastic. And, you know, myself, I don't have that kind of equipment at this point in time. And I know that this call already works. So if you don't have one, it's not prohibitive, but that's for taking yourself to the next level inside of um, being able to communicate more inside of um, our digital platforms. And uh, last point as well is I've raised my laptop up. So just got a book under here. Um, it's really quite done. It's just to elevate that laptop up to the right level. Yes. That's basically it. Wow, James, thank you so much. You're you know, welcome. today I've learned a lot. We've learned a lot today in this community. You know, my takeaways is mute yourself when you're not talking. Yeah. Very important. Um, your composition, making sure that my background um, is clean and tidy and intentional mm -hmm. um, is important for our presence. Yeah. And then the light having lots of light on our face and natural light from the window is important. Mm -hmm. And if we can't, making sure that it's one kind of light, whether it's white light or yellow light. And then inside of audio, um, just a simple headpiece makes a difference. We should not use our laptop audio. The sound mm -hmm. quality is poor. Use a headpiece in that regard. So very, very powerful. And all of that allows us then to connect yeah. As if we're in a coffee shop having a cup of tea together. That's it. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our community? No, I think, that, I think that's about it. I think um, be present um, and don't let the technology get in the way of you actually connecting with people. Great. And um, how can people connect with you? Yeah, sure. So the best way to connect is via email. It's just info at videowhy.com, video why.com. Fantastic. And for everybody who is listening to this, you know, all the links to get in communication with James for that extra support will be in the links. Um, so don't, don't worry about trying to remember it now. That will be readily available. Now, James, thank you so much for doing this business summit. I really appreciate it. And this is your second time round because the first time round I recorded it, I did the recording in the wrong setting. Um, mm. And so then you trained me on how to do it again. So thank you so much for your time and doing this twice so that our community could actually have um, information and knowledge so that they can present themselves digitally. You're welcome. <laughs> it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to help you out and the community as well. Wonderful. For everybody listening to this business summit, thank you for your generous listening. My team and I are there for you as you navigate through these unprecedented times. If you are interested in having a conversation with me, feel free to email me at connect at Thank you very much.